let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making the Mighty Messenger bag by Fierce Kitten Studios. I have been obsessed with making this bag this week. Um, I think we've got eight of them cut and I have half of them made at this point. Um, it's got this great, really fun front zipper pocket. Of course, it's optional. Um, I have changed this pattern, not a lot, but a little bit, just fun ways to make it more unique. We've added back slip pocket, front slip pocket, two snaps instead of one. And then there's the inside two slip pockets and a zippered pocket. Um, this is a great way to kind of give an update uh, an updated look to the messenger bag because a lot of people nowadays don't really have big giant bulky laptops like they used to so um, I think what this fits is like a smaller MacBook Pro if it's the iPad Pro or um, like an iPad mini stuff like that I'm honestly not sure I've never stuck anything inside of it anyway I absolutely have been having so much fun making these bags um, I probably wouldn't do a tutorial if I flat out said I hate making this bag, but you never know, you guys ask for them and I have to do them. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, I got nothing else. <laughs> okay, we are going to start with the crossbody strap. I've got a fresh bobbin. It's the best way to do it. So I've got my vinyl here. And you want to make sure that your tape, double-sided tape, is three inches in the center. So you can mark this out. I'm just going to eyeball it. It's not great. It's fine. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure it's firmly pressed. I'm going to peel off the tape. long vinyl. Um, and this strap is cut to six inches wide because it's one and a half inch hardware th um, down the length of the vinyl. So it's about 54 inches. And I'm just gently folding this on the double sided tape. I definitely recommend making a center mark so that you don't get messed up after you've made as many straps as I have. You kind of get a sense for the eyeballing where the center is. Okay, I'm leaving a little bit of a gap in between. So when it folds over, it's got a little wiggle room and it's not butting right up against each piece. Of course, this is always easier with a cat in your way. Ben, move. Get, meh, get, uh. You offended? I can't sew while you're there. All right, so I'm gonna fold this over and I'm starting with the open edge. Stitch length is set to five. Get, get, get. Go away. Thank you. All right. And I'm just going all the way down that edge. This really pretty rose gold vinyl is from a quilting shop local to me called Jackman's. Uh, mine's in Fairview Heights, Illinois. I think there's one in St. Louis too. Um, this was like 15 a yard I want to say and it feels really nice it's not too thick and it's definitely not sticky and it's just got a really pretty metallic rose gold sheen to it um the woman who worked there she said she just ordered like an ultramarine blue so I might have to go back for that all right so I'm gonna go really fast on this other side So 
I've sewn down all four edges. I'm going to clip my excess and then I'm going to trim the very end of my strap anywhere that it might be uneven. You really want that to be a nice straight cut, but these scissors weren't feeling it. All right, so now I'm gonna grab my hardware. I need two one and a half inch snap hooks, which they are. And then I have these one and a half inch wide mouth slide adjusters that are really great for vinyl straps. Um, if you guys ordered hardware from me recently and you thought it was one and a half and it's smaller, please message me so I can give you some of your money back or send you the correct size. Um, I ordered what I thought was one and a half, but it was 1.25 and I'm noticing that it was more and more sent out that I didn't know. So if you bought some, please check and let me know. And I'm so sorry about that. Um, we will do what we can to make it right for you. All right, so I've got my slide adjuster on there and I'm making two stitch lines horizontal on the vinyl. I didn't fold it over twice or anything because it's not really going to fray, but you want to make sure that it's nice and sturdy since it's such a wide strap. So there are my two lines of stitching. So with the wrong side up, I'm laying it flat. I'm going to grab my snap hook, slide it through one side, and bring it back up and back down. And you can see with that wide mouth slide adjuster, there's plenty of room. So my vinyl is wrong side up and I'm folding it over and then I'm gonna make a box stitch. And then with one and a half inch wide hardware, you're able to add like two rivets next to each other. So I'm gonna do that. Instead of doing um, like an X through the box stitch, I'm just doing four corners of the box and then I'll add rivets. And I'm gonna do that off camera, but I'll show you guys what it looks like. So there it is before. And here it is with the rivets attached. So it's a nice one and a half inch wide crossbody strap. Okay, so I've made some changes to the pattern. I mean, when, when don't I? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with slip pockets. And the way I designed, or not designed, but the way I cut these slip pockets is the main panel of the bag where it says to add the zipper pocket directly under that I folded the template under and cut out four lining pieces of the slip pocket and this is going to work with waterproof canvas only where this raw side doesn't matter because we're just going to fold the top edge over for two of them and top stitch and then for the other two I cut out exterior vinyl as well and lining so these will be put together and put on the outside of the bag and the other change that I made was with the snaps of the bag um, so what I need are some scraps of Decoville light and Decoville heavy and I know they're in this bin somewhere and now I can't find it all right that's okay so I'll tell you the measurements I added to these. So to make it easier on your brain, you're going to need one of your exterior slip pockets if you're making it this way, otherwise you can follow the directions. And then your lining fabric for your exterior flap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold both of these in half and make a little snip. And the waterproof canvas side, I'm going to press pretty firmly. And then what I'm going to do is line my ruler up and make a, a center line up to 2.25 inches. 
and then two lines out from there that are three and a half inches. So it's gonna be seven inches total long ways. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this here is seven inches total and this is 2.25 inches. And these, these, this is where our snaps are gonna go. So for this side, I'm gonna add these little scraps of Decaville light using my iron which needs to be warmed up. And then on the flap piece, so that was our slip pocket, this is our flap piece. It's two inches from the bottom. And then again, that three and a half inches from the line. And the pattern only calls for one snap, which is great for beginners because it's easy to line that up. It's a little bit harder to line up perfectly two snaps and it takes more hardware. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the way she originally designed it. But if you want a little more security, you can add two snaps. And that would be how. Okay, so I've drawn out this T, essentially. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm going to press my interfacing to it. So for the um, flap, I like to add Decaville Heavy because that's going to have the most wear and tear because you'll be pulling up on that. And then for the um, bottom snap bleh, slip pocket, I'll be adding Decaville Light. All right, so with that Decaville Heavy, usually you're not going to be able to see through it. And that's why I add those center lines so I can find where I need to add my snap hooks again. And what I love about using Decaville is it fuses really fast so I don't have to worry that I might um, over iron the vinyl or the waterproof canvas. So I'm just remarking those points. I'm lining up my washer and marking out the parallel lines that I'll be slipping the snap through. Oh, you like the new zipper pulls, Ben? They're pretty sweet, huh? All right. So then I'm gonna take this seam ripper and you don't wanna stab too far. You just wanna go the length of your parallel line, keeping it nice and straight through your interfacing. And then the exterior slip pocket is gonna get the female snaps. Ben, you goober. All right, so the exterior gets the female snaps just poke through the slits, add your washer, and then you can either um, turn your snap in or out. It's up to you. Lately I've been going in, but I used to go out. That sounds like my social life also. <laughs> but ouch. you can see there. And I'm just using the bottom of my seam ripper to fold that in so that I don't strain my hand. And then you can add a little bit of tuck tape over that if you want as well. Totally up to you. And then the male pieces are gonna go on the bottom of your front flap lining. pushing that flat. Okay, so next I want to um, finish like top stitching all my slip pockets and get my zippered pockets ready because that makes this go a lot faster. All right, and if you're not adding these slip pockets, you can just go ahead and completely skip this step, but I've got um, here we go. 
So I've got all four of these slip pocket pieces. For the ones that are going into the lining, all that I'm doing is folding the top edge under about half an inch and top stitching. If you're not using waterproof canvas, you're just using regular old fabric, you'll want to cut two of these out and make them like I do the exterior slip pockets. Okay, and for these, we want to put lining on top of the exterior, so right sides together. We'll go ahead and clip these together. And you can kind of see how doing multiple steps at once that are similar, it really saves time when making these bags. So then I can just clip these apart. Because my lining slip pockets are finished, so I'm gonna set those aside. And then these need to be top stitched. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just fold them wrong sides together now. I'm not gonna be able to use my iron to press this since I don't wanna melt the vinyl. So I just roll the seam in between my fingers and clip all the way across the top. And you don't have to add a ton of clips, maybe like two or three, just so long as it's separated nicely. And then you want to make sure that the bottom lining lines up well, and then you, you can tell that you've got it separated. I'm going to do this one. I think I've just recently made about four of these um, and I sold I think two of them so people really like these bags I'm so excited about the pattern it's really simple but it looks really nice and I've made them in the past I did have a live video of me making them but I figured in case people weren't into the live videos we'd have a regular tutorial so now you can top stitch this all together, but I'm just going to wait because we're going to baste it really quick to our exterior fabric right now anyway. So it's like, why waste the thread? I'm going to line them up on the exterior panels. Um, there are no zippered pockets that I add to the exterior panels, exterior bottom panels, but you absolutely could just like you do the lining, etc. going to baste way around the edges. Um, for an all vinyl exterior with these slip pockets, I chose not to add any interfacing because it was already going to be thick enough and once you add things to your zippered pockets, you don't want it to be too heavy or anything. So there is the front exterior, all prepped and ready to go. And now I'm going to add to the back exterior, but before I do, I'm going to fold this in half and make a little snip at the top because that is where I'm going to add the flap of the bag later. So I'm just lining up the bottom edge, clipping in place, and top stitching all together. So now our slip pockets are finished. I'm going to work on all of the zipper pockets. All right, so for the zipper pockets, 
Um, I actually changed it up a little bit from the pattern also with the front flap pocket, um, just to save myself a little bit of time. And I'm just doing my standard seven inch zippered pocket. So I'm marking out with my zipper template. This is from topsandbobbins.com and designed by Piera, who always has a question. So I just go ahead and mark out that box along two of the lining pieces and I'm gonna set them aside. I'm gonna start with my front flap. I'm using this Deathly Hallows fabric that I designed. And I'm going to line up that zipper pocket fabric. I'm doing it about two inches from the top edge and about an inch and a quarter is where the zipper pocket is gonna be from the side edge. So honestly, you could move this literally anywhere on the front flap. You just wanna make sure it doesn't interfere with the structure of the bag, really. So I'm just making two parallel lines, two parallel stitch lines. Back stitching at the beginning and the end, clipping all those threads. I'm gonna cut this open and press it. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the box stitch on the lining piece. Well, if you needed more Benjamin, you got it. Ben, what are you doing? You just saying hi? <laughs> oh, Ben. Good job. Good job saying hi. Get down, though. Get down. Your little butt scratches. All right, so one of the lining pieces now, fold it in half. We're gonna place right sides together. <laughs> Zipper pocket is gonna lay on top of it like that. But if you're adding these slip pockets, I would recommend laying that down to see that it's not going to interfere with your zipper pocket. So let me move this blockade for you. So hopefully you can see my zipper box is here. Here's where the slip pocket's gonna go. So there's plenty of room. It's not gonna interfere or cover up our zippered pocket, but it's also not way too close to the top. It's about two and a half inches. No, two inches. It's literally two inches from the top. So I'm not sure what the instructions say, but that's what I'm doing. And then we're going to sew that box stitch. Cut that open and press it. And what are you even doing? You're just standing here? He's not fighting to get away or anything. He's snipping into those corners. Okay, so these are the same size pockets. So now I can cut my zipper tape to the length of the zippered pocket. So I like to make sure that my zipper tape is hidden. Those raw edges are hidden inside the seam allowance. So I'm gonna cut this at the same width 
as my zipper pocket lining fabric. Um, and then I'm going to press these open and we'll sew our zippers in. All right, so I've got it all nicely pressed. So I'm just going to lay my zipper tape along the back. And then and top stitch that zipper into place. And then we're leaving this one open to birth through, birth bag through. So leave the bottom open. Benjamin, people are gonna get upset if you keep blocking the screen. They're gonna give you a thumbs down. Watch out for your tail. that open. I'm gonna trim down the extra seam allowance. And then I'm going to fold this like that and press. And then honestly, while I'm here, I may as well lay my slip pocket on and clip it in place. Even if I don't baste it right now, at least it's one less thing to worry about. One less thing to worry about. Okay, front flap zipper. You wanna make sure that your zipper pull is at the top of the bag. I'm gonna lay this in place. Make sure it extends into your seam allowance. Just start on one side. Did I not? There we go. So did I not press this well enough? I always want to make sure that you can't see much, if any, of the lining fabric. Sometimes you can do it kind of on purpose and create like a faux piping look to your zipper, but it's usually not what I'm going for. So I'm just holding this in place. And then I'm gonna need to pull the zipper pull down. But again, you wanna make sure that you don't mess up your zipper teeth. So you wanna keep it as zipped as possible so that nothing gets thrown off. You don't want your zipper to not function. That's never ideal. So I'm zipping it up just to make sure that it's still good, unzipping slightly to come and sew down the rest of my zipper here. There we go. And then I'm just pulling on the lining to make sure it doesn't show from the front of the bag. And then this zipper pocket I can close completely. So I'm gonna lay this over. And the way the pattern instructions show is that this pocket is basically one long piece that then gets folded over. Totally doable. It's just easier for me to do it the way I know. 
and I'm just gonna sew along all four sides. Okay. And now I'm going to add the front accent piece. All right. So for this piece, I think she has the top long edge of the vinyl just raw. Totally fine, especially if you have a domestic machine, it can get a little bit thick, but I do not like that raw edge, especially right in the front of the bag. So I like to use double-sided tape to fold the top edge down. You could also use quarter inch wide, just using half inch, cause why not? Make sure it's pretty flat. And I'm gonna just spray base this in place. I'm just using quilting spray. Just a little bit. Mmm, smells so great. And then I'm gonna lay that across the bottom. Oh, that's pretty. And then I'm going to top stitch that. One stitch length at 4.5 for five. Nice and slow around the edge. Um, so now what I'm going to do, um, I think I accidentally cut foam for my flap for all of these bags, but I'm not mad at it. So I think foam or fleece, whatever you have laying around would work just fine. But I'm going to go ahead and um, fuse this in place. All right, so I've got it somewhat fused and then I added my nameplate through the foam for a little extra stability. So now we're going to grab our lining flap piece make sure your zipper pulls aren't in your seam allowance or anything like that and line up the edges clip it all together um, and i can't recall i think the seam allowances on this pattern are on average half an inch but i actually have kind of been sticking to a quarter of an inch just so i don't have to trim down especially on the flap so i've got my stitch length set to four and a half and a seam allowance of about the width of the foot, essentially. Go really slow around that curve. And make sure you're back stitching at the start and the end. And then I am going to trim down my seam allowance only at the curves. And then we can turn this through. I just switched my stitch length to a five. along the seam with my fingers. You can also use a turning tool, crochet hook, whatever works for you. I feel like I always get comments of people telling me what I can do to turn the bag and I'm like, I've already done it. So whatever works for you. And then I'm gonna start rolling this seam in between my fingers. You could press it from the lining side really gently if you wanted to do that. I just roll my finger across the seam, making sure everything is nice and straight. That's the one thing about using foam and or fleece, honestly, if it's in your seam allowance, it's going to make your seam allowance bulkier. So it's either a good thing or a bad thing. Whatever floats 
your boat. So there's the flap. Ah, it's so pretty. The zipper pull and everything. Okay. So I'm going to top stitch that. I'm using a stitch length of five because my seam allowance is so bulky. I want it to look really nice. And I'm just following the edge along the foot. As I'm reaching the vinyl accent, I'm just back stitching one to reinforce that area. Slow around the curve. sewing across the top. Close that up. And just double check that you've caught the lining of your flap. And then I'm going to fold the flap in half and clip the center of the flap. And our flap is done. And just make sure that your zipper feels good. Your zipper pocket is closed. So now we're gonna finish off the lining by basting those slip pockets into place and then we'll work on our gusset. And this bag's almost done. Just trimming all my excess threads really quick. Okay, starting with my lining gusset. The lining gusset is a total of three pieces. And you're sewing the upper gusset to the short edges of the lower gusset. And then I'm not sure if it says to top stitch, but I like to top stitch across it. Either pointing up or pointing down, whatever works for you. Clipping all that. And then before you set this aside, go ahead and fold it in half and snip just the center in the bottom of the lining gusset. Set that aside. Oh my gosh, Ben. All right, that's my lower gusset fleece, my upper gusset fleece. Mm -mm. Mm. Um, so I'm just going to really quick, I know that this vinyl can stand a little bit of steam and heat, so I'm going to kind of baste the interfacing on, but it's it's like a baste pressing, I don't know, just very gently. Okay, so I just baste pressed the upper gussets and I'm going to attach my D-ring connector. I 
only have 1.25 inch D-rings, but I can still make them work. I just trimmed off a quarter inch of this connector piece and I'm going to tape the center of both of these, not the top bottom. Um, so right now it's about two and a half inches wide. And then folding my vinyl into the center and this time you can butt it right against each side. And now my D-ring will fit. <laughs> So like I said earlier, if you were accidentally set, sent 1.25 inch D-rings and you ordered one and a half, if this works for you, awesome. If you need a little bit of a refund because I sent you the wrong thing, please, please, please let me know. I'm so sorry. We didn't notice. Did you notice, Ben? Did you notice it happened? Or are you sorry? Neither. Well, I am. Okay. And I added tape so that I could fold that in and it wouldn't budge. And then I'm adding tape over it so it doesn't open. And we'll top stitch it on. And then I'm gonna do something very similar that we did with the strap where I just sew a box stitch, not an X. You still can, but I'm adding two rivets. So I'm gonna tape this on an inch and a half from the top and then in the center. And you can fold it in half to find the center. I've just been kind of eyeballing it, honestly. Inch and a half. Okay, top stitch that on. I do like to sew across the top twice though, just for a little extra stability. So again, with the box stitch going right across the D-ring as close as possible, I'm using this little scrap of leather to protect my vinyl and my hardware from the bottom of my sewing machine foot. And if you wanted to, you could actually um, sew across, I don't know if you guys have watched the Brooklyn handbag tutorial, but you could sew across like right here to reinforce and then add two rivets. Ooh, she'll be super strong. So I'm gonna go ahead and add two rivets to each of these and then we're ready to attach it to the lower gusset. All right, so I've got my interfacing fused to the bottom vinyl. I'm lining up the two bottom lower gusset pieces. They're a little bit longer than the upper gusset pieces. Let's stitch that all together. And then kind of butterfly stitch it open. So you're gonna top stitch along either side. And then we will add the top gusset pieces. So right sides together on each one. And then for this one, I don't butterfly stitch. I just fold it down and top stitch, or you can fold up whatever works for you, honestly. Okay, 
Okay. Um, so something that helps if your um, interfacing isn't fully fused is you can top stitch along all four sides of this gusset piece. That'll help keep everything in place, but we should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the exterior front of the bag. Fold this in half. Make a snip at the bottom. Why did I think those scissors would work? I don't know. So the snip at the bottom, line it up with the bottom center gusset. And I just like to add three clips here. And then line up with the top. Adding clips and I'm clipping with the front of the clips to the gusset because I'm going to follow along the edge of the gusset. It'll be a little bit easier. Make sure to line up those top edges, bring in any extra threads, and then we can kind of focus on clipping the curve, making sure everything lines up nicely. If it doesn't, somewhere you messed up a seam allowance, fix it. Gosh, get your seam allowances right. Been there. Okay, it's all clipped, so I'm going to sew in a U shape, make sure you're back stitching at the top, and then I back stitch down here again um, with about a quarter inch seam allowance. Backstitch. And then I like to backstitch where we have those accent pieces sewn as well. And then I'm just kind of holding that curve in place as I sew around. We're getting to the center, backstitch, flipping around. And I'm just going to check that I've sewn past any basting stitches along this front pocket, and I have. So that's good. Got some my spare thread showing. And where I'm going to trim is only, just like we did with the flap, only in that bottom curve in between where I've um, top stitched my gusset pieces together. So literally just that tiny little section. Just to reduce, reduce, reduce the bulk in the seams. Okay. So we're going to repeat that with the back exterior with the flap pocket. Make a little snip, lining that up. Clipping that in place. I, I like to do three across the bottom and then I'll turn to match the top of the bag. The corners for last. The only reason I, uh, this isn't taking me quite a long time is because I've made, like I said earlier, like four, three or four of these bags this week in the past couple days. I was like, is today Monday? Is it Sunday? Is tomorrow Monday? Yes. Well, I guess it doesn't matter when you're watching this. Who knows what day it will be? Okay. Okay, 
And again, you wanna make sure that you've sewn in past your basting stitch and then just trim the excess in the curved corners. And now I'm going to attach the flap. You'll be attaching the flap on the opposite side of the snaps with your fabric's right side together. So right now the snaps are in the top on this top panel here and I'm inserting the flap wrong side up, lining side up inside. It is longer than the bag, so you're gonna have to like fold it so it'll be sitting in your bag kind of like this. You wanna fold it and then line up those center snips at the top here right sides of your bag together. So exterior fabric, exterior fabric, lining side facing up. Très, très important. Oh. Clipping that all together. And then we're gonna baste the flap on. doesn't shift on us while we're sewing. Trim down all my little excess threads there. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the lining gusset piece. I am going to start with the lining piece without a zippered pocket. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this in half, mark my center, and line up my center gusset snip well and then for the lining of the bag you're going to want to increase your seam allowance a little bit so that it isn't um, like really floppy in the bag or anything okay and then for the curve of your bag, if it's not matching up really well, like this one is, so I don't need to clip it, but you can add just little tiny snips in the bottom corner to help it match a little bit better. Like this one isn't meeting just perfectly, so what I'm gonna do is take my scissors and just make little tiny quarter inch snips every so often, and that'll help your, your piece here flare out a little bit better. It's hard to see. Uh, hopefully you can see, no, you can't see, but you're just staring at my fingers. Um, those little tiny snips, they'll help stay in place. So as I'm starting at the top, I'm using the same seam allowance that I did for the exterior of the bag. And then once I get to that slip pocket, I'm starting to slowly increase my seam allowance. And you don't want it to be too drastic so that it's really, there's a lot of extra room between the two, but you know. There's a happy medium and you have to find it. It's a scavenger hunt. And then as you get closer again to the top, taper your seam allowance back to normal and then trim down the excess. Okay, so for this next part, make sure you're paying attention. If you weren't before, you're gonna want to now. Um, so if your bag isn't made with too much interfacing or too much stiff material, you don't really need to do this but I left one bag open with just the birthing pocket in the zipper. And I was like, this was a bad idea. Didn't like it. So I figured I would do this method. So I'm clipping the bottom, doing all the same things to the gusset as I did before. That's all fine. 
same, same. Okay. But when I get done sewing the curve of one side of the bag, I'm gonna back stitch and I'm gonna stop sewing. I'm gonna lift up my needle and move over to the next curve so that we'll have a nice big open area in the bottom lining that we can pull through the zippered pocket to then sew closed and do a normal whatever, whatever. So I'll show you. You wanna make sure that you're still increasing your seam allowance too. And then if your curves don't fit nicely, do the little snip action. Almost done with my curve. I'm getting towards that first clip. I'm back stitching and I'm lifting up and I'm going all the way to the next curve. All right. So now when you're trimming this down, you want to make sure you're only trimming that curve. You don't want to trim where you haven't sewn. So you can see here, I've only trimmed where I've sewn. Oh, you mean like what you just said? Yes, but I'm showing you too. All right. So now your lining is finished and we have this hole left in the bottom. That's a little bit bigger than our zipper pocket, but not by much but at least we don't have to like worry about messing up with our zipper or anything like that. Like we can re-sew this. So I'm gonna flip this right sides out. And you could even add a zipper pocket on both sides of this messenger bag lining. No one's gonna complain about having more pockets. Make sure you leave that open. And then I like to have the zipper pocket towards the flap because then it's on like when you open the bag, it's like directly laying across your body. So I'm going to line up my side seams first, clip that together because if your side seams don't quite line up, then you have a seam allowance, you have a seam allowance issue and you need to fix it. Your lining may want to kind of lift up because of the um, flap that's laying inside. So just make sure that you're lining up your exterior and you're lining perfectly at the top. You could add a little bit of staples if you needed to. But we should be good. I'm clipping with my clips facing towards the lining because it'll be easier for us to sew inside the bag that way. So I'm gonna be laying it like this and sewing on the lining side. And then again, just make sure that your lining and your exterior um, are lined up perfectly. Your, your flap's gonna wanna push it out, but make sure it doesn't Just take it clip by clip. Step by step. No, I don't want to sing that. I don't want to think about that show. Day by day. Ah, I thought about the show and things moved. Just what I said not to do. All right. Ah, but I caught it just in time. So I only need to make a few snips. See how my lining pushed up a little bit. You did it. I said not to, and I did it anyway. <sighs> this is why I hope you learn from my mistakes. Don't make your own people. There we go. 
All right, I'm gonna clip that back in place. Maybe I'll try and sew it from the exterior. No, I'm not, I'm gonna keep it consistent. Well, don't sing that song, because obviously you're gonna mess your, mess your bag up. All right, starting where I left off, just a ways past it, back stitching so that it doesn't come undone. It's doing it again. These fabrics just want to resist each other. There we go, it's not too bad. Started. I'm gonna make sure that I sewed down past where I basted the flap in place and it looks like I did just make sure you caught all your seams nicely nothing looks too uneven looks good to go so now we're gonna turn it through I'm gonna pull my lining out this gets a little bit complicated with that flap being so large. So what I do is I actually like to pull the flap out first. And then I'll kind of hold on to the flap with my knees. Pull the lining up. The only right way to birth a bag is to give yourself a serious double chin. So I'm trying to just kind of pull this all through. There we go. And I'm just double checking around that seam, especially on the flap before I finish pulling this all through because I don't want to have messed anything up. Looks good though. Yep, looks good. Okay, pull this through all the way. Make sure you push the gusset all out nicely. Basically what I'm doing now is just checking that I've caught all my seams, nothing's coming loose, nothing's separating. These colors are gorgeous. I want to keep this bag, but I won't. So now moving the flap out of the way, we're going to grab our lining pocket and taking my hand through there, I'm grabbing the lining hole that we left open in our bag pulling it through and this this method can be used with literally any bag that has a seam that's mostly flat it's a little bit harder to do when it's round just pulling that all the way through making sure I can see that open seam and I'm going to just line up those center snip that's already there I'm starting in the curve back stitching coming forward keeping a pretty consistent seam allowance with what I had originally make sure you stitch securely and then I'm going to trim that seam allowance because now I've sewn through it guys some of that didn't get in the trash can so now we're going to push the lining back through and inside the bag mostly. I'm going to worry about that more in a minute. I'm going to fold this shut. This is our lining pocket. Fold that back shut, clip it. Whoop, goodbye clip. See you never. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna add two woven labels to this bag because I wanna use this one that says made with magic. And then of course with my own business name on it. Will anyone see these? You never know. Do they match really cute? Yes, yes they do. Pushing my lining pocket in the bag. Get in there. And I'm poking the corners down with my fingers. And I'm gonna zip it up so that I know that I sealed it. I know it's taken care of. And then I'm gonna get in between this. You wanna like put your fuss, your fists to the gusset of the bag and push, push it in all the way. And then I'm gonna roll these seams in between my fingers and clip. And I'll be top stitching it through the lining as well. This is kind of like a leap of faith, but with every bag I've done it with, it looks pretty good. So. You're not going to be able to clip your flap so you want to make sure you've got it really nicely pressed and once it's clipped again I'm going to just make sure that my lining is pushed nicely inside I like to make sure that my flap closes pretty well at this point everything lines up it does because like once you top stitch there's no going back you know what I mean? It's pretty much the end. All right, let's do this. All right, I've got my stitch length set to 4.5. I'm gonna start with just past the flap of the bag on the side panel. Carefully, you wanna make sure your threads are to the back so nothing gets knotted underneath. Everything feels fine. And go nice and slow over the seam. It can get pretty thick with all the fleece and the gusset and whatnot. And I like to do just a little back stitch. And then as I do this, I'm pulling up on the flap so that I know that there's nothing stuck in the seam. It's all pulled out as far as it can go. At this point, you'll have hopefully made sure your bobbin is full. And then just take it clip by clip. Remember that it's easier to walk up a hill than it is to run up a hill. So if you've got um, any large seam allowance differences, just go nice and slow. If you need to use a Gina Majig, use a Gina Majig or a hump jumper, whatever you want to call it. And then as I'm getting back to where I began, make sure you hold on to your threads so they don't get bunched up. And I'm going to use my thread wrap, whoops, which is attached to double-sided tape. That was great. And then all we have to do now is attach the strap. That's it, you're done. You did it, good job. Well, I did. I don't know if you did it. You'll have to tell me if you did it below. Yay! Oh, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. So 
if you guys enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to have been subscribed. English, do I know you? Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already or don't, if you don't want to be subscribed, that's fine too. I don't mean to pressure you. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys pick up this pattern if you haven't already. Um, this is by my friend Georgia who donates, I believe, 50% of everything she makes to a great charity. And that's amazing. Um, so there's the back of the bag with the slip pockets. Um, I just think it's so nice to have those added. Like, who doesn't want more pockets? All right, see you guys later. Bye.